What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. I'm here today again to do another product review video. I know I said I wouldn't do one of these for a while, but I'm excited to make an exception today because this thing is an absolute monster. This is the Blue Eddy EB150 by Max Oak, and it is a 1500 watt hour, 1000 watt lithium power generator. So this power station is triple the size of any other device that I've reviewed of its kind. And it is a monster in another way because it costs 1400 US dollars. But as technology marches on and new products like this come out, the question to consumers always is, is it worth it? And that's really a question only you can answer for yourself, but hopefully today I can give you enough information that you can make an informed decision for yourself. So if you're new to my product review videos, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of unbox it and show you what you get and then we're going to put it through some real-world testing. There's a lot of professional reviewers out there that spend a lot of time on glitz and glamour. They have really nice looking videos and they talk a lot about the speeds and feeds and the, the bells and whistles, so to speak. But if you're like me, you'd rather know what this thing can actually do. Can it actually live up to the hype and the specifications and the ratings that the manufacturer gives it? So anyway, as you open this box up, you'll quickly notice something that's actually pretty nice. You're going to see some certificates of authenticity and some serial numbers and things like that. Now, the reason I point this out is because a lot of Chinese manufacturers do not include this type of stuff. You really are left to your own devices as far as warranty and support. But this isn't the first unit from Max Oak that I've reviewed, and they're one of the good ones. You will be able to contact a real human being for support, and you'll have all the documentation to support that. I apologize for my camera not being able to, to uh, zoom in properly, but here you see the charging cable, the AC charging cable with the uh, American plug on the end of it. So you can charge this device with regular household power, or it does come with MC4 connectors so that you can connect it to a solar panel and charge it that way. I am not going to test the solar panel charging method because of two reasons. Number one, I don't have 500 watts of solar panels lying around. And number two, it is the wrong time of the year for that in the United States. It is the winter. So it would not be able to fully charge within one day and that's going to interfere with the results. But the manufacturer recommends a maximum of 500 watts of solar connected to this device and claims it will charge within three to three and a half hours. For those of you who don't know what an MC4 connector, this is what they look like. So you would plug the one on the bottom into the uh, power bank and then the other two go to a solar panel. So there's nothing else in the box but the two charging methods and the warranty information. And now here is what the unit looks like. So the first thing that you're going to notice is this device is very heavy. It weighs about 40 pounds. So while it is technically portable, you're not going to want to take this on a hike or something like that. Here on this side you see it does have two AC outlets and a fan. The fan does operate under high load and also continuously while it is charging. And the rest of the business is on this side. You have the LCD screen that tells you what's going on. You have the DC input for the solar charging input or the AC adapter. And you have five USB ports, one of which is a USB-C port. And then you have a cigarette lighter adapter, which uh, there's no cable included for that. But if you do have a device that gets powered by a uh, regular cigarette lighter adapter, you can use it with this device. So here you can see the LCD screen. It does tell you the watts of input power and output power of both the DC and the AC out functions. The buttons on the left will enable or disable the DC and AC power and also the power of the unit itself. And that's pretty much it for operating this device. Now what I want to do with this device, since it is a monster, is I want to see what it's truly capable of. So I tried to think of the two most terrifying loads that I could possibly throw at one of these things, and that would be a heater and an air conditioner. So before we begin, I'm going to plug this into the wall and make sure that this thing is fully charged up. So when you plug it in, the LCD screen comes on and tells you the state of charge of the battery, and the fan on the back turns on as well. Okay, so now it's fully charged, and let's go ahead and put it through its first real-world test, which is an electric heater. What I'm going to do is connect the heater to the unit and turn it on and turn it on to the lowest setting, which is 750 watts. 
and then we're going to use a kilowatt meter to verify the actual wattage that's being used against the LCD screen reading. So I use this heater all the time and nothing really is different than when I normally use it except that the red uh, light on the front of it that you can barely see in the video and I apologize for that but instead of kind of lighting up and being solid it was kind of flickering a little bit. So what I'm, I'm thinking is the case and I don't have an oscilloscope or anything to test it with is that the pure sine wave output of this device is not a perfect pure sine wave. So I have no way to confirm that, that's just a hunch, so take it for what it's worth, and ultimately it's not going to make much of a difference except to the most highly sensitive electronics. So what I'm going to do is continue to let this run until the battery is completely dead and the unit shuts off, and I'll let you know how long it lasts. So after 1 hour and 46 minutes, the unit shut off. And it averaged 720 watts for that duration, and that equals a grand total of 1,272 watt hours, which is obviously less than the 1,500 watt hours that it's rated. And I knew that that was going to happen. Because of battery behavior explained by Poikert's law, we know that under high load, a battery will not produce as much power as it will under a small load. And yes, lithium batteries do still behave according to Poikert's law, although they're, they exhibit the effect less than a lead-acid battery does. For the next test, we're going to go ahead and recharge the battery in the background there, and I'm going to show you the air conditioner that we're going to use. You may have seen this unit in another video in my channel, but it is an air conditioner that I rigged for my IT closet where my servers and my network equipment is and it consists of a window unit and multiple large duct fans. So please excuse the normal closet clutter stuff and all the cords on the ground. So after recharging, we'll go ahead and fire this thing up and turn on the air conditioner and the fans, and we'll see what kind of load we're gonna put it under. So under a steady load, we ended up at 220 watts, and so we'll go ahead and let this thing run until it shuts off just like the other test. So the air conditioner ran for 6 hours and 14 minutes at 220 watts, which equals about 1,371 watt hours. So for the last real world test, we're going to time how long it takes for this thing to recharge under AC power. The manufacturer states that it should take about 10 hours to fully recharge. But to my surprise, in my testing, it only took 9 hours to recharge. So that was a good thing, however, that is still a very long time to recharge a battery, so take that into account when you're going to be using this device. In conclusion, this is literally the granddaddy of lithium power banks. This thing is a monster, it holds a lot of power, and it can power almost any device you can think of in your home. However, it does cost a fair amount of money. And while it does have a handle and you can carry it around, it's probably more limited to job site and campsite only as opposed to being truly portable anywhere you go. And this would be a fantastic device to have in case of emergencies. If you live in Tornado Alley or where hurricanes are common, this would be something that would be a great alternative to a gasoline generator. The good news is if you're interested in purchasing this device, there currently is a $150 coupon and look in the video description for a coupon code to get an extra 10% off for watching this video. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber.